Hey guys, welcome back to Off the Fence. I'm Finch. Listen, guys, if you're just joining us, make sure you're sharing and liking, sharing and liking, sharing and liking, and make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed already to the YouTube and click on the notification bell so that you're notified each and every time a live is on or we post a new video. All right, guys, my guest today was born and raised in Trinidad. Can't wait to hear this accent. By way of Baltimore and now resides in California. She's a mother of two, divorcee, who's helping other men and women maneuver their way through toxic relationships, separation, and or divorce. And, guys, we're getting 101 with her right now. <music> Nala Carter is here, ladies and gentlemen. How you doing? What's good? I'm good. How are you? I think you got to fix your camera. Your head chopped off. I'm trying to there show you, you my go. shirt. Let me see what it say. My weird it is what? Dope is. Okay. I don't know if well, that you can say it on here. Oh, okay. I yeah. didn't know. I this, didn't know. This is this is uh, adults only radio. <laughs> You say all Good kind of stuff know. on here. How you doing today? <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So, so you are here. <laughs> you are here, and we're talking about mental health and uh, relationships, right? Now, how, how do those mm -hmm. two go together? Correct. Sometimes we, um, I have a lot of clients that feel as if they're ready to move on because, you know, there's this saying, you know, the quickest way to get over one is to be up under something else. And that is the quickest way to really mess yourself up. And so I came up with this three-step program to help people heal again, not from just regular relationships, but toxic ones. Mm -hmm. Because I've, if, if you don't address those issues, kind of to go off what Marquita was saying, if we're not addressing those issues, they're going to come up and resurface in some other way. Why, why are you so serious right there? <laughs> <laughs> why are you, why, why you giving me school teacher right now? Okay, I'm going to take the glasses off. No, I, I'm not going to be able to see you. So You ain't going to be able to see that. You're going to be in here blind. <laughs> As, as hell. Where's the screen at? <laughs> you better keep your glasses on. Right. <laughs> okay. So 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 I think the the best way to get off get over one is to get under another is the dumbest advice ever given. Mm -hmm. And why do people follow it so much? Because it's easy to really heal from a relationship to really get over someone those things that you those steps that you have to go through they're hard like step one is the mourning period when you have to take into the fact that take into account that you're not with that person anymore it's no longer oh that's such and such as wife or that's such and such as husband you're back to this one individual again not a part of a team and so dealing with those things you like I don't know what, especially I have people that have been together for 10, 15, 20 years. And so all they've known is being with this individual. Y'all watching the same shows. Y'all have this you know, particular schedule. And so veering away from that is hard. That's why a lot of people stay in these unhealthy and unhappy relationships. And people are attributing COVID to divorce. Like, no, COVID didn't break y'all up. Y'all stuff been messed up. You feel me? But COVID prevented you or deterred you from being able to go out because, you know, home ain't happy. So you had that outlet. You had something to take you away from being around that person. So now that you're around this person 24-7, you're like, ooh, can I really deal with this? Because now you're stuck in the house. Like you were saying, now you're stuck in the house with this person. A lot of times people just don't want to leave that comfort because stepping into the unknown is, is scary. So the the is the unknown scary in a sense, or is it having to face the reality of you may you may be the problem? Ooh. Um it might be a bit of oh, no. I have All to right, relocate. No. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You know, you gotta get out the basement. Is that what it keeps you? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's my hole. That's my office. That's my hole. They got her locked up, loud. Yeah, Lord Jesus. She she giving distress signal. Look at her eyeballs. What their eyeballs look like? <laughs> SOS, SOS. Yeah. All right. So so now the first thing I noticed about you when you came on was your fire red hair. Is that naturally colored, or you know that's you you what's what's going on? Yeah, it's it's red me. right now. So one thing that you will notice about me is I, I'm very indecisive with my hair. So okay. I put braids in, like I was literally sit up here for like four or seven hours or so, put uh, the, bra the braids in and be ready to take them out like two days later. That's as long as you don't put them in mid show, we good. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I promise. And we come back from break and you up here like, yeah. So, you know, I was just saying, like, I told the girl, you should leave them. I mean, but I mean, you know, I, I'm going to be like, hey, okay. <laughs> like, I'm going to send you over to Marquita. <laughs> Let her fix your life, okay? <laughs> you got me, girl. You got me, Marquita. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so re relationship. Now, now, many would probably say, how did you become an expert at helping people men relationships? Because just because you went through a bad breakup or nineteen, don't make you an expert, right? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> so so, so w what would you say classifies you as someone who could lend? relationship advice to people and it actually helps them uh, build better, healthy, long lasting relationships? Well, I don't think it's just about um, being in a relationship or having several breakups, but I think it's about the bounce back process. So to give a little bit of background, I was married to a narcissist. So we're talking gaslighting, love bombing, all of those toxic things. So <laughs> my situation is like worst case scenario. And so mm -hmm. People have always said to me, like right after my divorce, they're like, how is it that you're so positive? How is it that you're so hopeful? Because I choose to be, because mm -hmm. I address these issues, because I went through the process. You know, like you were asking before the whole, you know, how, basically, how do you get from this to healing and becoming, you know, all of that you see here today? <laughs> all of that fabulousness. All of that fabulousness. Okay. But, you know, it's and it's, it wasn't easy. It was really hard. And there was something that I saw years ago. And it basically said, not because you're in a place of healing or working on yourself. It doesn't mean that you can't help someone else. True, 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 true. I think that's one of the misnomers about assistance mm -hmm. is we think we have always equated people being able to help us being in a certain position that we deem to be mm -hmm. a celebratory exploits of some sort and so we we don't see people who actually have the answers to our problems that sitting right in front of us that don't have a lofty title or they're not on television or in the movies or anything of that sort so yeah i agree with you i think it's the way we've been programmed that allows us to negate yes. adequate assistance uh which causes us to stay in our rabbit hole for mm -hmm. so, so much longer you know yes yeah. agree. all right so so what is one of the things, the key things you tell people when it comes to relationships and their mental health? Feel what you're feeling. Do not ignore it. Um, we always, especially as women, maybe, mm. you know, even with men, black men, but I would say people of color. Okay. We have this philosophy of I'm good. You could have just been through hell and hot water, but I'm fine. Everything mm. is good. We good. I'm good. Why, why do we do that? Why do you think we do that? It, it's channeled in, within us. Like, uh -huh. we always have to be strong. You, again, the, the, the black woman, the black man, because I know that you guys have your own things that you're, you're taking on and dealing with every day. But it's like we're always expected to have it together, mm -hmm. to every, everything to be lined up correctly. And it's just like, oh, it's not. And even when it's not, we can't let the world know that we are shattering. We can't let the world know that if you even pushed me or touched me, I may just break down in tears. We can't mm -hmm. allow ourselves to be that vulnerable for the world because the world is not going to be easy. On people of color so we always have mm. to be strong now you said we we feel like we have to keep who the hell we got to keep it together for who are we doing this the for folks, the church folks our family we hide who we really are we don't want people to really there's so many marriages there's so many not even just marriage but just relationships in general where people are hiding 
how they really feel because they don't want mm. to be talked about in the community. They don't want, oh, you heard they this, 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 this. You don't want to be a part of the gossip. And so you put on this front, you put this smile on your face and you pretend that everything is okay. All is well. Yes. Cause I did that for years because I had kids because I'm now I'm making my decision on, is this going to be good for me? Is this going to be good for my kids? How is this going to affect them? Kids are resilient. They are going to be fine. And what we fail to realize and when I say we, I'm speaking about single, you know, mothers, our kids are going to be fine as long as we are okay. If we are in bad relationships with toxic partners and we're staying for the sake of the kids, because we've all said it before, if we're staying for the sake of the kids, if they see that mommy is not happy, they feel it. Mm -hmm. So don't think that you're doing them some kind of service, some service to them. You're doing an injustice by staying in this unhealthy relationship because you're teaching them a new normalcy. Right. I was going to say you're doing them a disservice because mm -hmm. you're teaching them improperly how relationships should be constructed. Exactly. It's not healthy. It's not going to be long term. Mm -hmm. And you're just moving. You're moving on the what I say, the Amtrak train. Your mm -hmm. train is just going down a track. But it, it, it's like one of those things. You're not alone. You, you've seen the train before. You, you live in California, right? <laughs> yes. You, you got to be clear. <laughs> you know, you're know, you from Trinidad. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to assume that you've seen the train before. You know? Okay. But, but you know, you're, in, you're on this long journey mm -hmm. of something that's destructive and toxic. Mm -hmm. And you're saying to yourself, I'm staying because of the kids. I think I'm staying because of the kids. It's just as dumb as uh, it's getting off of one and uh, to get over one, getting on another. I think those two go in the same category together, you know, yes. because neither one of those are beneficial to you or your children. Facts. Yeah. And, and it's like you said, if, if you're doing anything, you're hurting them. Because you're yeah. telling them that this crazy, this craziness of your life, this is okay, and it's it's not. It's not okay. All right. So so the the advice you gave people right now was um, say that one more time, one more time I for my, my listeners. In the, the listeners in the back, the balcony, or, or the back the, that couldn't hear. Hey, the people back. Can you hear this? <laughs> People in the back. People in the back. Talking to y'all. I can't see them because the light is in my face, but I know they're way up there somewhere. Well, but you said feel what you're feeling. Yes. Don't don't try to ignore it. Don't try to you know put on the facade. Feel what it is that you're feeling. You may not don't necessarily have to wear it for everyone, but when mm. you're in those quiet moments, feel those feelings. If you're angry about being in a relationship and investing so much of yourself and losing so much of yourself, whatever it, whatever those feelings are, feel it fully as painful as it may become, because when you really feel in it, it becomes so heavy and eventually, you know, you have to release it, but you have to feel it in order to release it and move forward. Uh, that's good. That's good. I, I think um, people, I, I like the fact that you said we don't have to, stay in it we ain't got to wear it publicly but it's okay to feel it because yes. i think sometimes people don't realize it's okay for me to feel this way but how i feel should not dictate how i respond Correct. right yeah Correct. okay uh, uh, that's good stuff you you, you could be good okay <laughs> now where's the trinidad accent okay so disclaimer I uh -oh. went to Morgan State, right, uh -oh. HBCU, and everybody was acting like I'm some kind of trained chia pet. Say three. Say, <laughs> say, say, say Trinidad. Say this like, yo, fam, what? What is you? No, I'm not about to say three. And I'm not about to say like how we say it back home. Like, why are you trying to play me? And so I've learned to, you know, blend in. Oh. However. <laughs> okay. However. You piss me off. Listen, when the, when this accent come out here, these kids like, oh, let me, I'm going to button up this shirt. Let me just put this away before she start flipping out. You know, it, it, it only comes out when I'm, when I'm about to like, you know, flip a table over or something. <laughs> see, I'm glad you said that. I wasn't going to say that. Cause see, I saw, I saw some videos of you. I did some research of you okay. over the weekend. Right. I said in this video of you. And I was like, wait a minute, she sounds like, and, and I didn't even, I literally, I lied to you now. I didn't even know this until I got, I got ready to read your introduction. I said, like, oh, she's from Trinidad. That explains the accent. But you was talking to a kid. I hope it was your kid. 
<laughs> because I think they had just got out the shower or something. They was wet. And you was like, oh, you was giving them the business now. And I was like, that accent, That's a, she from London? Where's she from? UK? <laughs> She was out here killing them with. I was like, "Oh, it just it, why would you come in here wet?" But you said it in a whole different accent. I wish mm-hmm. I could mimic it. I'm not going. <laughs> oh, yeah, gonna, please don't. I'm please not going to mess it up for you like that. But I, I was, I was, you know, when I got on the day, I was like, "Oh, she's gonna come in here with that London," you know. <laughs> Good day, Mike. <laughs> oh, that, that's that's Australian. I think. I'm sorry. Nah, I need to it stick to my day job. Is not, yeah, keep, please keep my day job. Yeah, let me keep that. Okay, so so so. What are some of the what are some of the destructive behaviors that you've encountered, not necessarily personally, but in your in your work field that men and women have dealt with when it comes to relationships and uh, a mental health aspect? I would say not understanding triggers. Oh, I'm going to give an example. Mm. When I, It was like six months after we officially like split up. And Mm. I went on this date because everyone was like, it's been six months. You should be dating. I'm not going to go into that part, but, you know, I'm going to leave that alone. Right. (laughs) I hate when people try to tell you what is going to work for you. Everyone's process is different and that timing is going to look differently. But that's that's all I'm going to say. Right. Anyway, so I decided to go out with this guy and we've been friends for a while. And he heard that I was separated. and He was just like, hey, I just I just want to sign up real quick. And I'm like, all right, cool. Cause this is a friend. We I'm hanging out with my friends, so it's not really feeling like a date. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. I went on a date and he's sitting across from me. And for some reason, I was everything he was doing was just irritating my entire soul. And I'm just like, this is my friend. Like, why am I bugging out? It wasn't until later when he hugged me so that we could leave. He had on the same cologne that my ex-husband used to wear. When we don't know our triggers. So so the whole time, I'm not even allowing myself to enjoy being on this date, being in the moment, because I have this trigger. I don't know what it is. I can't really pinpoint it, but I'm just I'm just in this funky little attitude. You know what I'm saying? I'm in this funky mood because there's something here. I don't know what it is, so I can't really address it until it was kind of too late for it. You know what I'm saying? Uh So two things I would definitely say is stop allowing other people to convince you of what your time frame is, of Mm -hmm. when you should, whatever, when you should move on, when you should start dating, but also understand what your triggers are. Understand when certain things happen. It's kind of like what Marquita's saying. If you are crying about something, Mm -hmm. something happened to trigger that emotion. Mm -hmm. Know what that trigger is. Yeah. Be conscious of that. So, so let, let, I want to make sure because you know I, I came here for all the smoke today. So, so you on a date, mm-hmm. and Mr. Charlie got on <laughs> Uncle Charlie. Leroy's Uncle Leroy's cologne all night. And you wonder <laughs> why it's irritating the hell out of you? Yes, <laughs> I was so bothered. I was sitting there like he is just annoying me. I mean, and we were oh, we were so okay friends, and just something. I'm just like you are just. Why? Why are you looking at me? And he's like, "Oh, sh- 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 shouldn't I look at you?" No, <laughs> it was terrible. He here with his uncle Leroy and cologne on. <laughs> he be like, "Mr. Charlie," because <laughs> you know you date them old dudes. I, I know, I know you date mm-mm, them old dudes. No, I don't like young, but I don't. Okay. What's the What's the age range? Maybe. Five years max, because that my ex husband was younger than me, and I I just I vowed to like never do that ever in life again. So so, ever. are you saying that you have associated one aspect with an entity? Yes. Woo! I, don't you teach your clients not to do that? I mean, I do, but you know, it's kind of uh-uh. Like, I don't know. Tell me. I just. I've tried uh-huh. others, and we just weren't on the same brainwave. So, um, yeah, I was just like, no, mm-mm, this isn't it, and I'm not about to try to force myself to do this. So so you do a five-year difference between – a well, five-year difference of what? It, yeah, it doesn't have to be – it's not a specific age, okay. but there's, it, it, there's a mindset. 
you know, gotcha. um, we were we met when he was 17, I was 20, and it was just like it, it was a lot of growth, and men grow at different rates than we do. <laughs> You must have just saw what I just saw. I did, I did. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it, I just, I just realized that it just, I just don't want to date someone that's younger than me or around my age, but just a little, a little bit older with a little bit more maturity. And okay. a lot of young boys that I've dated, spoken with, talked to, they just weren't on that, on that brainwave. So what's the one one advice you would give somebody that has just come out of a toxic situation and they're looking to uh, enroll themselves back into Love University? What would be the advice that I would give them? Yeah, what would be the one thing you would tell them? Because they, I mean, they fresh out like mm -hmm. maybe six months, eight months. Since you're the six months, we're gonna go uh, uh, nine and a half for them. Okay, I would say date yourself. When Ooh. I first got separated and I started dating myself, this is, you know, I won't tell. I feel I feel old, so I'm not going to tell my age. Everyone was like, you didn't go out on a date by yourself. I'm like, why would I lie about it? Mm -hmm. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't really understand it. But listen, if you've been in a relationship with someone that has gas, you know, that they has gaslighted you and, and, and demeaned you and belittled you, you have to find yourself again. You have right. to find things that you enjoy. Not, oh, if y'all watch power together, now nah, y'all gotta throw, you gotta throw away power for a little bit until you get to a place where you can associate that with just, this is my show, as mm -hmm. opposed to, oh, me and such and such used to watch this. Date yourself. Do things for yourself because if you can't enjoy your own company, honey, okay? <laughs> if you can't enjoy your own company, how do you expect somebody else to enjoy your company? You got to be okay with being by yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be okay with being alone because there's many people in relationships and they're lonely. Be comfortable being alone. Be comfortable dating yourself, getting to know who you are, things that you like, things that you may have grown to like, or things of that nature, because that is what's important. That's 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 great advice. Um, people, I don't think people understand the, the dating yourself. Mm -hmm. now, I probably wouldn't call it that exactly, mm -hmm. you know, um, because I delve in terms that center around free agency, you know, sports terms. OK. You know what free agency is? Yeah. Oh, OK. You looking like I'm about to say something. You, I know. I'm just. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm ready. That's all. You, Go ahead. You grasp me. I can see you. You holding on to the edge of the seat now. You, yeah, because you know, you, you know. But, but why do you think people shy away from getting a chance to be reacquainted with themselves after coming out of the situation? I, I, I wouldn't even say getting to know yourself because I think you're pretty aware of who you are as a person. You may have to un discover or uncover some of these hidden things that we've suppressed in, 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 in times because we, we tend to sometimes roll into a shadow or go into a mm -hmm. closet when it comes to relationships, right? Mm -hmm. But um, why do you think it's difficult for people to accept their new reality uh, as opposed to always having somewhere, someone around. It's easy. It's easy to be a part of something else. It's it's hard to separate yourself from a situation, a place where you were known as being a part of. Mm -hmm. That's blase blase. That's Finch's wife. That's mm -hmm. such and such his girl. It's easy. And so to be able to stand on your own, you, you get into this place of loneliness, feeling alone, mm -hmm. feeling like, oh, my God, like, did I make the right decision? Should I have left? Even though that marriage mm -hmm. was trash, you're like, oh, my God, did I do the right thing? Right. Because being alone forces you to hold that mirror to your face and see things as they are. Mm -hmm. and sometimes you don't want to see that reflection like we were saying earlier, like seeing your reality, seeing things that you you may have messed up with. Cause we're not perfect. No one is. Oh, perfect. what? So you, you have to now sit here and think like, what didn't I do in this marriage? How could I have been better? Mm. I know I got a saucy mouth. Like what, what you say to me? Is huh? it saucy? Oh, oh, let me put my hair up. Like what you, you want to smoke fam? I know that that's a problem that I have. 
Uh-huh. And so in my dealings after my ex, I'm like, oh, don't, oh, don't say nothing, girl. Don't just mm-hmm. <laughs> swallow an air bubble, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm giving myself time to think. I'm giving mm-hmm. myself not to just react. I'm mm-hmm. realizing that, you know, in, in dating myself and taking that necessary time, I realize, oh, dad, like there's things that I said to my ex that I probably shouldn't have said, but I can't take it back. Mm-hmm. And in the, the height moment when I was in counseling, that was one thing that my therapist said. Mm. When it's when it's that is said, you can apologize for it, but it's done. It's, it's done. in that space. Right. And so, you know, if you get to a place where you no longer respect your partner and y'all are just saying whatever, that's that's not healthy. And so I feel like we have to in in dating that dating phase, dating and getting to know ourselves again, we have to have those moments of truth where we can be honest with ourselves like look i need to work on this this and this i need to work on this because of blah not to be with somebody else but to be a better me because right. ultimately that's what it's about be- becoming a better you mm-hmm. now you mentioned in your 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 uh example finch's wife why are you gonna say dexter's wife because i don't gonna- know i couldn't think of a name i mean you know i don't want you putting that out there people be thinking Free agent, free agent, free agent. Sign a no team. Well, well, Gregory's wife, whoever. You know, Gregory, epic. that's another old dude name. <laughs> you keep coming up with old dude names. <laughs> I thought you, I thought you was trying to ch- change the uh, landscape. <laughs> Gregory, <laughs> Mr. Donald, Charlie. Donald. Uncle Leroy, I mean, come on. <laughs> all right, all right. So, so before we get out of here, mm-hmm. um, so, so, be, be going through what you've gone through, having the, having the passion and compassion to help other people, what has been one of the greatest rewards of that? Um, you know, it's about to be deep when they take a deep breath before they say something. I know, I know. So as with anything that you're passionate about as a creative, we Mm -hmm. all have those moments of doubt, you know, when you have to, you know, stare fair in the face and you just like, Ooh, should I be doing this? When you just second guessing everything, I continue to move forward in what I feel I'm, I was destined to do this. This is my kismet. And then I have moments when that fear seeps in and I'm just like, I don't even know if it's resonating. I don't even know if I should continue down this path. And then I will receive a message just out of nowhere. Like, thank you so much. You've helped me. I can't tell you. So really quickly, after my divorce, I relocated from Baltimore to San Diego, having no friends, having never been here before. I was just like, I'm a writer. I should be in LA. I don't necessarily want to live in LA. San Diego, close enough. It's a car ride. Let's do it. Took the kids, like the dog, let's roll. And God just opened up all the doors. And so women have reached out to me like, oh my gosh, you're such an inspiration. And that feels so amazing. You know what I'm saying? Because Mm. again, am I perfect? No. Are there things that I need to work on? Plenty. Okay. However, I am continuing to, to, to pour and I feel that as if people can see that. And when it resonates, when you rec- you know, when I receive messages like those, it's just like, yes, I'm mm. doing it. Like it's hidden. You know what I'm saying? It's right. just like, cause sometimes you just feel like, you know, you just do the motion. I'm sure you drop in the podcast every week. You don't know who's listening. You don't know if it's resonating. But one person, and it only has to be one, that one person is like, thanks so Thank you for this. Thank you for, for discussing this because it really helped me with blah, 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 blah. To know that you're changing one life mm. is just amazing. Uh, see, I wanted to go in a whole different direction. But <laughs> you ain't here using your college words, kids met. And, uh, we, we, we flopped out of college here. At <laughs> we, we're not talking, we're not using the kind of words here. My bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> My kinsman organically inclined and inducively obliquely of <laughs> who is this? <laughs> who is this? <laughs> uh, 
Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pro- Professor Carter? <laughs> Hey, I'm is. Hey, I'm is. <laughs> Did you say you live in San Diego? Yes, I do. All right, I'm moving tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Not to San Diego. I'm leaving Los Angeles, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I said it. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I can stay here now. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so listen, Dollar. If people want to connect with you, uh, how, how do they do so? Uh, you can follow me all over social media at Nala Carter, or you can go to my blog at www.afterdivorceish.com. What kind of stuff you write over there after the divorce? <laughs> Everything, the r- realness, you know, dating, jumping back in there. Like it's it's hard in these streets, man. Dating during hard? COVID, COVID, everything. Yes. H- have you dated during COVID? No. Okay. Yeah, so, so I, I don't know how people roll, and I just I can't be rolling the dice like that. What was that? <laughs> <That's me rolling laughs> dice. I know you you crapping out with that dice hand. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dice hand was that? <laughs> oh my goodness, we got a lot of work to do. All right, so so I wanted to ask you this because you said it's hard. Mm-hmm. Is it really hard? I mean, literally, is it really hard? Okay, well. If you're asking from a personal Nala, not the professional, right. I don't like people. I don't like meeting new folks and, you know, the serial dating. And I just, uh-huh. I don't have the energy for it. Like, I'm working on so many different things. I'm a single mom. I'm a stay-at-home mom. My kids are in school virtually. It's a lot. And right. so to give people energy, it's just like, why? I don't, mm, I don't know. Marquita, we're going to put you out the chat room. <laughs> Hey guys, stop putting her stuff up on the screen. <laughs> Somebody's gonna find. I'm finding some asses today. That's what you tell me. That's how you get that stuff to stop right there. You it's not gonna stop. Right. Marquita is not stop. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I get it. You know, um, I think anytime you're anytime you're on the free you're in the free agency market, it's mm-hmm. it could be a difficult transition to getting on another team. Um what about practice squads? You, you want to get on practice squads? <laughs> <laughs> Nala, you ain't signing to no practice squads? No. Oh, okay. What about G League? No G League? Mm-mm. None of that. Okay. Yeah, no. That's that's You're a hard no. Fr- franchise player. Yeah. Okay, so you need the big bucks, that's big it. contract. Got you. Locker room with just your name on it. Got it. All right. I, that ain't too much to ask, is it? It's, it's, you know, it just depends who who building the locker room. I guess <laughs> you know. So, uh, so so so, are you are you you're not done with 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 relationships though, right? You no. you're getting back in. You, you just COVID has kind of set some when things the back. Time, the time will come; it will all just fall into place. That's, you know, God going. Is that what you tell people. yourself? God going to into the door. Look, when it's gonna happen, when it's gonna happen. Nothing happens before it's time. I don't feel like I'm ready to just you know be out there yet. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm happy with where I'm with where I am right now. Happy is a good place to be. Um, I think there's not enough people who are actually happy with where they are, which is why they end up in and out of the same similar types of relationships because uh, they're not, they're not allowing themselves to be alone. They're not okay with just being with themselves for a moment. Mm -hmm. You know, they feel like they have, they have to be, uh, they have to have somebody around Mm -hmm. and and, and I get it. You know, it, it makes sense to them, but it's not conducive to uh, your mental health. Right. Yeah. And it's again, it's, a, it's it's rushing the process. You know, I want to be with somebody because I want to be with them, not because I don't want to be alone or I can't stand my own company. Like I, when we get together and it happens, it's going to happen because I'm in a good space. You're mm-hmm. in a good space and we're in a good space together. Simple. We are in a good space together. I like the way you say that. So um, are you I pre- the tea out? You, you pouring the tea. Wait a minute. I'm pouring the yes in, in yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Mm. Oh, he got mm. a sip of tea. Oh, it's good too. Good. It's real good. Um, so I appreciate you stopping by the fence. Um, so personally, okay. So you you saw what I did with 
Mar Marquita, right? <laughs> Oh, what are you looking like? I don't like this look I'm getting right now. Um, go ahead. I'm ready. Uh, okay. All right. So what is the one thing in your life that <laughs> you... <laughs> Y'all better not put it on the screen either. I seen it. <laughs> Somebody don't want their job. Just be prepared, sis. <laughs> Somebody don't want their job tonight. Okay. So... <laughs> Looking at your life, mm -hmm. I know you haven't accomplished everything you desire, mm -hmm. right? So moving forward, looking at what you desire to do, because you think in, let's say when you think about city structures, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we talk, we have small towns, we have rural areas, the cross on the other hand, they taught me this in psychology. What I know what that means. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> crossing the arms when people cross the arm like that they, 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 they're, they're bracing themselves I am. <laughs> I'm good at this guys I'm good at this okay I'm good at this okay <laughs> Marquita did you see that coming <laughs> uh, okay so so when you're looking at the thing because this is how you think mm -hmm. your mind is massive you don't see small things, no matter no matter how uh, limited other people's views are about things. You see things in grand scale. It's always big. And all the time people say to you, oh, that's too. They, they think it's too big for you to accomplish. Mm -hmm. But you never doubt the fact that you can do it. Right. Mm -hmm. You can stop me when I start lying. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so when you're looking at the things that you desire to do, what's the one thing that you see in what you desire to do that you you're uncertain about. Ooh. Oh, I got to put the hand on the hips for that one. One thing. This is why they call me Mr. Get Your Ass Off the Fence, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. mm. that's a good. Then he gonna sip the tea. He gonna sip absolutely. The tea. Um, the one thing. You know what it is. I would have to say being in a relationship. Ah, I putting those two together, right? Yeah, because yeah. it's easy for me to be on the outside looking in. It's easy for me to give advice like sis, mm -hmm. like this, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, tweak that. But me, the not the person, the woman, I'm afraid. You know, I'm afraid of. Hey, sis, I'm afraid of failing at it again i'm afraid of bringing mm. this person around my babies and um it just not be it i'm i'm, I'm afraid of making the same mistake twice well, twice not that was four times you know and i just yeah, you put up two fingers that i, I was like i wasn't gonna judge you though we're gonna judge you okay and um yeah i just that is that is the biggest fear because my kids have not seen me with anyone since their dad and I split up like ever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's a lot of pressure. I've taken my time. I've done the work, but, um, and I'm very hopeful and I'm hopeful with everyone. And I always tell, there's always somebody for somebody. Mm. But when it comes to me, the person is just like, you know, it's, it's hard. That word again, mm -hmm. it's hard. So let's break that down, okay? Because okay? I want to help you get your ass off the fence. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard. You see it as hard because of the challenges. And we equate everybody that we meet won't be like everybody we've met. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what, you, what I want you to start seeing is it's going to be challenging. But I can do it. Mm -hmm. Because this is the thing that you help so many other men and women do yourself, you know, and as the teacher, sometimes you have to be willing to become a student again so that you can learn how to maneuver through those life's challenges. Because many folk that you serve think you got it all together and you don't have any issues, but silently you wrestle with some of the same things that you give advice on, mm -hmm. which tells you what, Nala? What does it tell you? It tells you that you already have the answers. 
You just got to listen to yourself as you talk to other people. Allow that to apply to you because it does. You're right. You're right. You're right. And I, I have been I have been trying to, again, just step outside of myself because I think it's easier for me mentally, like mm -hmm. step outside yourself so I can see the situation from the outside looking in. Again, mm -hmm. I know that there are things that I need to work on and, um, you know, just even though there's fears, that's with everything else, even though there's fears, I'm not going to run away from something that could possibly be for me at the same time. But yeah, it is challenging. Challenging. I like that. <laughs> I like that. And, you know, um, any way I can help you get off the fence, because often I used to say to people who motivates the motivator. Mm. who empowers those who empower others who help those who are always serving other people and sometimes we got to surround ourselves with like-minded individuals who don't want anything from us but who can give us everything mm -hmm. yeah well said look at me getting your ass look off the fence you. tonight look at you <laughs> Hey, it's been a, a plum pleasing pleasure, as Les Brown say, uh, having you on the show tonight. I'm so glad you stopped by the fence. It, it seemed like it took us forever to get you on this show, I know. and uh, but we got to have you a back, uh, have you back again soon. I love to be back. Thank you so much for having me. This was definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, just don't take twenty days, uh, twenty years to answer our emails. <laughs> you know? Andrea gets frustrated with that. She's like, hey, I caught, I emailed her nineteen <laughs> times. <laughs> I got no response, Vince. We're going to have to book another I'm, guest. I'm sure that's not how you said it, but okay. You, I, I, what I said, you you don't want to know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't want to know what I said. <laughs> you know, I got this. No, never mind. <laughs> I got, we are out of time. So we're going to get on out of here. But thank you again for joining us. Uh, we're going to see you back here again soon. All right. <laughs> Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just like now. I have the radio on the telly.